tell you what, it is a tricky little thing getting the food and my face in a camera shot when I'm cooking. I don't know how people do it. Maybe I'm just too tall. Maybe you need to be shorter. I have no idea. Anyway, hi, I'm Hannah. This is Sweet Fern Homestead. And it is so windy outside again that there's just, I just can't. I mean, it is like everything is blown around in the back. There's no way I could get anything done. So I am roasting chickpeas and I am looking through my drawers in the fridge and finding a few things that need to be used up. One of those things is some beets that I had bought at the farmer's market, just kind of randomly. And I have always wanted to make pickled beets. So I am definitely going to look at a recipe for that so that I can can them. But for now, that's the oven. For now, here's roasted chickpeas if you don't know them. If you've never roasted chickpeas, you are gonna to wanna to roast chickpeas after this. It's so simple. These are soaked and sprouted chickpeas that I then put in the freezer. I took out, defrosted for a couple days, and now they're ready to use. Totally eyeballing. I'm just gonna coat them with oil. I'm using avocado oil. I much prefer avocado oil or coconut oil when I'm doing a really high heat. So I'm just getting them coated. And then I use any seasoning that I have that I feel like. This time I'm using paprika and I'm using pepper. Ooh, that was a lot of pepper. I do like pepper, but that was a lot of pepper. I'm gonna use cinnamon. You see, there's no recipe here. You're just like throwing stuff in. You're just spicing it up. You could do a sweet version of this too, like a sweet spicy. That could be like really tasty. Some brown sugar. This is onion powder. I would use garlic powder, but I don't have any right up here. And I was too lazy to go downstairs. And then a generous amount of salt. Generous. And then you're gonna mix that up. And you just wanna make sure that your chickpeas are nice and coated, especially because you just added too much pepper. And that's it. I've got my oven heating up. I put it on 375. And the idea is that these just kind of dry out. They get a little bit dry, a little bit crispy, but not overly crispy. And they are delicious. I've done, uh, if I had cumin, I probably would have done cumin and like cardamom. Uh, I like cinnamon. I like the way cinnamon kind of I don't know what cinnamon does. It's like, it's this hint that there's a sweetness without there being a sweetness. That's that. And then you're just gonna spread it out. Like this. Nice thin layer so each chickpea has some space because you do want them to dry out. We're gonna put this in the oven. I have no idea for how long, so I will tell you that when they're done. So I'm gonna set my timer just initially for 15 minutes, and then I'm gonna come check on it. This is the broken timer, so it'll probably go off in 10 minutes. We'll see. I'm gonna pour a cup of tea, look up a pickled beet recipe, and I'll be back. So when I stopped drinking almost three years ago, it was April when I decided to stop drinking, and I had one drink, I think I had one drink in June or July, and then that was it. Um, anyway, once I stopped drinking, I started to drink tea in sort of addiction fashion. I drank decaf black tea. This is what I drank all day long. I haven't had this for three days, and I feel like I feel like I've been away from my true self because I haven't had my decaf black tea. So I let it sit for quite a while, the tea bag get nice and dark, and then I splash in a tiny bit of almond milk. And that is my absolute favorite thing to drink. Okay, so I have three books here. I have Weck Home Preserving 
this is a really good book. I have Food in Jars and I have Naturally Sweet Food in Jars, which apparently there's a lot of things I wanna make from this book. Let's just go to the index. So Beats, uh, nope. Huh, no. Okay. All right, strike, two strikes, one more. Oh, I wonder if they'd be under pickles. It shouldn't. Okay, here we go. Beets, gingery pickled, 138, 139. Okay, so this one is from Food in Jars. You need to get this book. Two pounds of red beets, two cups apple cider vinegar, salt, sugar, cinnamon, ginger. Okay, got all that. One of the best things since growing my own food uh, has been a reduce, a huge reduction in garbage. That fills my heart with so much joy. We have recently switched to paper bags for our garbage. So I have one paper bag for garbage, one paper bag for compost in that like drawer thing that they build into your cabinets, you know? And I reuse the paper bags all the time because we don't really put anything wet in there that can destroy the bag. So we usually go out to the garbage can and just dump it in, unless it's a particularly full gross one. The compost I bring straight out to the chicken coop. I dump it into the chicken coop. They take care of it for me, turn it into compost. Even foods, so I put food scraps in there and everything, all the leftovers, anything that, you know, the kids scrape their plates. If they scrape their plates, they scrape it into that bag and that goes out to the chicken. So we have very, very little garbage that we make. Every now and then I go to the farmer's market. Not everything is packaged. In the summer, you'll find much less packaging. This is kind of in the winter farmer's market. Stuff was kept at this particular farmer's market. Stuff is kept behind the counter. You ask for what you want. So you get like a package of beets and it's in plastic. So this is one of the few times that I my food has um, this kind of waste. I don't know if I can do it on. Here we go. Okay, so a pound and a half, pound and a half. Gosh, I wish I had just a little more beet somewhere. I don't. What could I substitute? Could I add another half pound of with the beets? Well, whatever, I'm just gonna make the recipe. I'll have extra brine, I'll use it for something else. It'll be great. This scale, this isn't the scale I used, I used last year, but this scale I found at the uh, thrift store for two bucks and I was overjoyed, overjoyed. It's so cool. It's so like vintagey looking and cool, I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna get those beets into water. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit sometimes because I have this thing where I want to not have eaten the food for a while before my personal crop of that food grows. So like, I'll look right now and make sure that I have no peas left to eat. I found one bag of peas that we had frozen and I know peas are still a ways away but I wanna make sure that any supply I have of those peas um, in the freezer is gone. Now, I don't have the same rules for canned stuff because canned stuff you can keep for a while. I will say we are on our third year of our pickles and the bread and butter pickles are still amazing. Bread and butter pickles are amazing. They still have like a crunch, a bite to them. The dill pickles on their third year, second year they were fine. This is the third year, which you know is kind of like your limit I think for stuff like that. So third year pickles, mm, not so great. What happened is we ended up eating a lot of fermented foods and we had I don't know, we got tired of pickles. We had, we had a bumper crop of pickles three years ago uh, before I put this big garden in. We were just growing in the garden beds. Six plants and I got hundreds of pounds of cucumbers. I like filled my pantry with pickles. I was making so many pickles. That's how I learned to can was these cucumber, crazy cucumber madness. And we were giving them away. They were going bad. Like we had cucumber 
I've never seen anything like it. So last year I was so scared to plant a ton of cucumbers because I didn't want to end up with all of that, but it doesn't always translate. We had like, I made like a tiny little batch of relish and um, some fermented pickles, but that was it. Like we barely had anything. So you just don't know. Anyway, I like to, when it comes to things like beets, I have no idea if I'm gonna grow beets. Like some, they were hit, and, hit or miss for me. I finally was able to grow some. Um, but when I can stock up at the farmer's market and get something like this and then get some of them into jars. So like if I'm having, like if I make some homemade hummus, I love to have these sweet potato, cumin, spicy sweet potatoes that I bake in the oven, kind of like the roasted chickpea, exactly like the roasted chickpeas, just swap out sweet potato um, in tiny little bits. I do that and um, I like to have like something pickled with that. So it could be a sauerkraut, but like a pickled beet with that in combination. I just think that's like one of the most delicious things to eat. So timer went out for the chickpeas. I'm gonna check on them. These are my last three garlic I wanted to show you. These are the last three. I don't even know if they're any good. Oops. I don't think the recipe called for garlic, but it seemed like you should add garlic. Chickpeas are still cooking. We're on, we're on, we're almost on, what? 25 minutes, it'll be 25 minutes soon. Okay. I'm gonna make the brine. Okay, cup of sugar. And two cups of vinegar. It says two cups of water. And a cinnamon stick. Ginger slices. I need to cut those up. And salt. So two tablespoons. One. When you get your ginger and you slice off the peel, you can throw that into um, some boiling water and make tea out of it. You don't have to waste that. It's perfectly usable. So I'm sometimes a little generous when I cut it off so because I know that I can make a tea out of it. All right, so this says, do, 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 peeled and thinly sliced. Two inch piece, I think that was about right. Let me just check on my garlic while we're here. Okay, I think we're gonna use this piece here. Ginger, gingery, garlicky beets. I'm out for like five minutes and I'm dirty. All right, taste test, taste test. Yeah, they're done. Very, very important step is to sprinkle them with salt as they're cooling because you'll never have added enough salt. You just won't have, I'm telling you right now. And then let them cool. It's a little love fest, huh? Oh, it's a little love fest. This is why I can't keep food on my counter. Because of you. I don't think you'll like beets. Now I'm just gonna get a little messy. I really don't mind if my hands turn purple, but if you don't want your hands to turn purple, you can use a, use gloves. Okay, so then the idea is that you cut these into, I don't know, kind of like whatever shape you think you might want to eat them in, I guess. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to be water bathing this one. This is just going to be the jar that I'm going to eat now. So I'm just going to throw the beets right into a clean jar. I'm going to scoop out some ginger and garlic and then just pour this. I usually have a funnel when I'm canning. I'm 
sheets. They look like they're gonna be delicious. And as I said, I love eating pickled beets with hummus, like a homemade hummus, or in this case, I decided to go ahead and roast the chickpeas. So I'll be munching on all of that together. If you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. I have a nice red thumb now. And as always, thank you for being here. Appreciate you.